I'm Peter McAllister. I'm a neurologist, headache specialist, and clinical researcher at the New England Institute for Neurology and Headache in Stanford, Connecticut. Welcome to this edition of Migraine and Me. On this one, we're focusing on the groundbreaking CGRP blocker drugs for migraine, and so we've titled this one CGRP and Me. But before I get to CGRP, let me say a little bit about migraine, the disease. First of all, if you have migraine, it's not your fault. And secondly, there's a stigma associated with migraine that I haven't encountered in any other disease that I treat. And that's a problem because the world views your migraine through a different lens than they view other medical conditions. Take the following sentence, for example. Jane can't come with us on vacation because Jane's multiple sclerosis is acting up. How do we feel about Jane? We feel bad for her, right? We, we wish her well. What if you alter that sentence just a little bit and you say, Jane can't come with us on vacation because her migraine is flared up. How do we feel about Jane? Is she weak? Can't she just suck it up and take an Excedrin like the rest of us non-migraine sufferers? Migrainers have to put up with this. In fact, even the words headache and migraine are used pejoratively, right? We say things like, my boss gives me a migraine. But we never say, my boss gives me neuropathy. Or we say, the classic, not tonight, dear, I have a headache. You never hear someone say, not tonight, dear, my rotator cuff is acting up, right? So again, migraineurs have this thing that put up with that other people with other diseases don't have to. But there are 38 million of you, migraine sufferers, in the US alone. And here's another important fact. Most of you are women. The World Health Organization says that migraine is in the top 10 most disabling medical conditions on the planet. And in women, it's in the top five most disabling. And it strikes young and middle-aged women mostly. And those, of course, are the prime child-rearing and career decades, right? You don't have time with your busy schedule to put up with one horrible, throbbing, nauseating, dizzy, light and sound sensitive disaster of a migraine day, let alone two a week, four a week, or even 25 a month. Now, headache specialists divvy up migraine a number of ways. First of all, if you have migraine with 30 or so minutes of lights or dots or zigzags in your vision, we call that migraine with aura. And those of you who don't have that, and that's the majority of you, that's called migraine without aura. We also divide up migraine into episodic, which is 14 or fewer headache days a month, and chronic migraine, which is 15 or more headache days a month. And that distinction is important because Chronic migraine turns out to be the more malignant or aggressive form of the disease. People with chronic migraine compared to episodic have an increased risk of depression and anxiety. They're more likely to be overweight. They're more likely to use doctors and go to emergency rooms. They're more likely to have been victims of childhood trauma. And they're more likely to call in sick to work, get fired, and spiral to a lower socioeconomic status. So clearly we need to treat migraine, right? But big problems and big gaps exist. Now you can think of migraine treatment as three buckets. There's modification of lifestyle, acute treatment, and preventive treatment, which is where these CGRP blockers hang out. Now remember earlier when I said that having migraine is not your fault? Well, that's mostly true. Migraine is a biological, autosomal dominant, genetically inherited, disorder of pain processing in the brain. And you can help that about as much as you can help your height or your eye color. Migraine is also quintessentially a biopsychosocial disorder. So given its inherent biology, psychosocial factors play a role in how few or how many migraines you have per month. Things like diet, hydration, exercise, how much you sleep, uh, stress and how you react to stress, mindfulness and meditation, all of that is important to turn up or turn down the volume on your migraines per month. Some things like hormones and weather systems coming in, we can't help those as much. Now, think of acute treatments, and those are mostly nasal sprays and shots and pills, as knocking out the acute migraine itself. They're supposed to decrease the pain and the associated symptoms. Whereas preventive treatments, and again, this is our CGRP area, they're generally pills, and they're taken daily to decrease the number of migraine days per month. And when we're lucky, they decrease the intensity 
um, and they make the acute medications work a little bit better. Now we have preventive medications already. It's important to note, actually, that no migraine preventive out there was designed for migraine. These were designed for other conditions, like treatment of epilepsy or to control your high blood pressure. And it turned out that patients taking those had fewer headache days if they were migraine sufferers. And lo and behold, they became migraine medications. The problem with the preventive migraine meds we have now is side effects. And it turns out that the migraine preventives are chock full of side effects. Now, not everybody gets these side effects. And if you're in the group that can decrease the number of days on a migraine preventive drug and not have disabling side effects, consider yourself among the lucky. But here's a sad statistic. 70% of migraine sufferers who were put on preventive medications ditch them within six months. And we have to be aghast and ask ourselves, why is that? Why are people stopping their migraine preventive medications? People aren't stopping their diabetes pills after six months. And the reason is not that we're curing migraine in six months, no. The reason is intolerable side effects and a lack of perceived efficacy. Basically, patients taking these drugs often don't perceive they're getting enough out of it in terms of headache reduction to justify the crummy side effects. Now, that's where the CGRP blockers come in. The main claim to fame of the CGRP drugs is that while they work well, and we'll get to that, they're virtually side effect free. And that's important for migraine sufferers. They're also the first class of migraine specific drugs designed for migraine and not for some other medical condition just found to work in migraine. So what is CGRP? Well, it stands for calcitonin gene related peptide. And it's a peptide that we all have in our bodies. It comes from a gene, the CGRP gene, that is interesting in that it splices for different proteins depending on where it is in the body. If you take the CGRP gene, for example, and place it in the thyroid, it splices to produce a chemical called calcitonin, which is important for calcium metabolism. But take that same CGRP gene and put it in the brain, and it now splices for CGRP, which has nothing whatsoever to do with calcium metabolism, but everything to do with pain processing and signaling. So the first CGRP drugs that we experimented with were in the form of pills. Why? Because pills are convenient. But remember before when I said that pills have a tendency for side effects? Unfortunately, we found them. And this was in the form of liver toxicity. And ultimately, the study was completely canned. So scientists went back to the lab and feverishly began to work on how to get CGRP blocking drugs into the body without an oral route. And what they found. CGRP monoclonal antibodies was a complete game changer. Now, you can think of monoclonal antibodies as engineered smart molecules. And what I mean is they're given by a subcutaneous injection, either once a month or once every three months. And you could do that in your home or in an IV uh, preparation every three months in the doctor's office. But being engineered smart molecules, these monoclonal antibodies go from the site of injection up to the brain processing of pain center. They bind CGRP or its receptor with lock and key specificity. They knock it out. They stay there for a long time. And then they're broken down into little proteins that the body just recycles anyway. Now, because they're engineered smart molecules, they bypass the liver, the kidney, the stomach, the heart. In fact, think of a side effect on any of the old preventive drugs, and you're not going to get it on the CGRP blocking monoclonal antibodies. And now you've got ease of dosing and virtual side effect freedom. But the big question, of course, is do they work? And the answer is, by and large, yes, with the following caveat. Uh, humans are complicated beings, and brains are tricky. No medicine works in everybody all the time. It doesn't matter if it's cancer or Parkinson's disease or migraine. But in our research, we found that these CGRP blocking monoclonal antibodies had about the best data of any migraine preventive drug out there. In fact, in the studies, about half the people with migraine got a 50% or greater reduction in the number of headache days they have per month. About a third of people got a 75% reduction in their headaches. And a small but significant minority got a 100% reduction in their headaches. And that's about as close to a cure as I can think of. 
So now it works, and it has virtually no side effects, and it's convenient. So it sounds perfect, right? Not exactly. So first of all, these monoclonal antibodies are new. And it's going to take years to follow them in close surveillance to make sure that some rare side effect doesn't pop up. So far, in the thousands of people in the studies, we haven't seen that, but it's not impossible. The second thing is that monoclonal antibodies are expensive. And your health insurer is not going to be overly enthusiastic as far as covering them for you. Uh, however, if you have disabling migraines, and particularly if you've missed some work or some school, and if you've tried and failed one of the migraine preventive drugs that are already out there, CGRPs may be just right for you. And at that point, we think your insurance is going to cover it partially or perhaps fully. Now, a famous woman writer, I believe it was Virginia Woolf, said, uh, in the middle of a migraine herself, the fact that migraine doesn't kill you is a mixed blessing. And that's true. Migraine doesn't kill anybody, but migraine disables. Migraine prevents you from being who you are and what you need to do. I mean, think about it. If you have nine migraine days per month, that's 100 days a year that you can't be you, right? But it's a good time to have this crummy condition because the CGRP blocking monoclonal antibodies are out. My advice is do your homework. Read up on CGRP and migraine, learn about it, and then as they say, talk to your doctor. Your brain will thank you for it, and so do I for listening. I'm Dr. Peter McAllister. For more information, visit us at neinh.com and look out for more of our Migraine and Me series. Thank you.